After the discussion in the first video, I hope I've convinced you that the important fact of an infinite series is whether or not it converges. If it converges, then it represents a number and can therefore be used in other mathematics. For the rest of the week, I'm going to be going through a series of techniques to determine if a series converges. The first technique applies only to alternating series. Recall that an alternating series is a series where the sign, the positive or negative, alternates for every term. I can write it this way, where I assume that the numbers a, n are all positive, such that the negative 1 to the power n gives the alternating sign. At the end of last week, I introduced the test for divergence. This was a test that says a series diverges if the limit of its terms is non-zero. Please recall, this was only a test for divergence. If the limit of the terms is zero, then nothing can be said. The terms going to zero is necessary, but not sufficient for convergence. For alternating series, the limit of the terms going to zero is sufficient. This is the nice situation, where the situa situation works as your intuition might assume. As long as the numbers are getting smaller and smaller, it adds up to a finite number. The reason this works for alternating series is, of course, the alternating signs. Adding and subtracting a series of smaller and smaller numbers means that the total sum will jump around up and down, but will eventually converge to a fixed value because I'm adding and subtracting on either side of that value. Without the alternating signs, this behavior is not guaranteed. So, for alternating series, the test is really nice. I just have to check the limit of the terms. If the limit of the terms is zero, it converges, and if not, it diverges. Now that I have a criteria for convergence for alternating series, I can talk about the alternating harmonic series. This is a very important example, and I'm going to use it to demonstrate some of the strangeness of infinite series. Adding up a finite number of numbers is a pretty straightforward thing. But it turns out that adding up infinitely many numbers is less straightforward. When infinity gets involved, there's the potential for some very odd behavior. Let me show you what I mean. Here is the alternating harmonic series, the reciprocals of the whole numbers with alternating signs. I'm not going to prove it here, but the sum of the alternating series is the natural logarithm of 2. In the alternating harmonic series, all the odd terms are positive, and all the even terms are negative. I can group these two together as the odds and the evens, and the sum is then ordered by alternating between them. Odd, positive, then negative even, then one positive odd, then one negative even, then one positive odd, then one negative even, and so on. Now let me change the order of the terms. Instead of alternating one odd and one even, I can instead alternate two odds and one even. The negative and one half now comes after two positive odds, then the negative one quarter after two more, then the negative one six after two more, and so on. Since both sequences of numbers are infinite, this is still a reordering of the same numbers. I can keep making the sum forever and it still uses up all of the even and all of the odd terms. Now let me work with this order a bit. If I am really observant, I can see that this ordering results from the original series but adding these new terms. Only even reciprocals with themselves having alternating signs. The one half now cancels, and then the negative one quarter adds with the existing negative one quarter to make negative one half. That creates the first three terms. Then the one sixth cancels, and the one eighth adds up with the existing one eighth to be one quarter. That produces the next three terms. And I can continue this pattern forever. The sum at the top is the same as these two other sums added together. But then this first piece is just the ordinary harmonic series. And the second piece is exactly half of the same series. If I pull one half out of this second part, the result is exactly the harmonic series, the alternating harmonic series. Therefore, I have the alternating harmonic series plus one half of that same alternating harmonic series. But if the alternating harmonic series sums to ln 2, well, then the result here should be 1 plus one half of that. So it should be 3 halves ln 2. What has happened here? I have reordered the numbers, taking two odds and then an even. This still captures all the same terms, but they are reordered. However, by reordering the sum, I have changed the result. This can happen. 
In the definitions that mathematicians have made for infinite series and convergence, it can happen that the order matters. And this is fundamentally odd thinking about normal addition. If I add three numbers together, it obviously doesn't matter what order I put them in. However, for infinite series, apparently it can matter, which is very odd. And it actually gets even stranger. Here's a theorem for you, which I won't prove in the video, but ask me about it in class if you want the explanation. It turns out that I can rearrange the terms of the alternating harmonic series to add up to anything I want. Any number at all. For every real number, there is a particular rearrangement of the alternating harmonic series that adds up to that real number. How does this make any sense? The sum of a set of numbers should be its sum, not literally anything at all. Well, this is one of the consequences of the definition that mathematicians have adopted. If this consequence is unacceptable, well then you would have to reject the definition. Mathematics as a whole has decided that, you know, we're alright with the definition and we'll live with the implications, which means that results like this stand. You can rearrange the alternating harmonic series to add up to anything you want. Thankfully, it turns out that not all series are quite this strange. To consider which series have this kind of odd behavior, here is a new definition. Take a convergent series. If I make all of the sum, all of the terms positive, I can ask again, does that new series now converge? If it still converges when everything is positive, then the series is called absolutely convergent, absolutely because I've taken absolute value of the terms by making them all positive. Otherwise, if this is not true, it is called conditionally convergent. The convergence is conditional upon the signs. The alternating harmonic series is conditionally convergent. If I make everything positive, I get the normal harmonic series, which I've already talked about a couple of times and which we know from last week is divergent. And it turns out that this is the important property. If a series is conditionally convergent, then the order matters and it can be reordered to add up to anything. However, if a series is absolutely convergent, then the order doesn't matter. Any reordering of the series will add up to the same thing. So if I want sums that behave reasonably well, like I expect them to, like finite sums, I can always decide to only work with absolutely convergent series. And most of the convergent series that are used in applied mathematics are in fact absolutely convergent, and the fact that they can be re rearranged at will without changing the value is a pretty valuable and useful property.